Hi everybody. Um, I'm on my way to work and sometimes I do my best thinking in the car. Um, I've done these videos before and people seem to like them. Um, I, uh, I was thinking about, I've done some interviews lately uh, on the radio and on TV and what occurred to me is that most people don't know two facts that are that are crucial um, when it comes to addiction and and these facts make the foundation um, for getting over an addiction and doing it this is gonna sound dismissive but doing it easily and I'm, I'm gonna give you the facts and I want you to think about this first the first fact is and there's two parts to it really uh, there is no loss of control. In other words, people don't lose control, ever. Now, there's a small exception to that. I say ever, but if you're passed out or overdosed, obviously you've lost control physically of your, of your senses uh, completely. Um, but anything barring uh, unconsciousness, you're still conscious. When you're conscious, you're making choices. And there is no external force or disease that's rendering you uh, compelled to use beyond your will, beyond your own decisions um, to, to get high or, or drunk. So um, this idea that you have, there's a loss of control is what the entire treatment and recovery uh, community is based upon. It's the foundation of the lie, the great lie that you have a disease that it's progressive, that um, it's chronic. Uh, and what we're talking about is, is this idea that you have a disease of the mind, um, that you think to yourself, I can't stop myself uh, from getting high and drunk. We're not talking about detox here. You know, if you poison yourself, you physically might need detox with certain drugs. Um, but that's what we have detoxes for. So you need to separate out um, physical dependence, which is a very real thing, from this idea that you can't stop yourself mentally and in your heart from, from stopping or, or reducing your consumption. Okay, so the loss of control disease concept is false, um, and there's a tremendous amount of research that backs that up, 70 years worth. Um, it was a made-up idea by a by a drunken uh, stockbroker in 1935. Some people had came up with this idea prior to that, um, but they never systematized it like Bill Wilson had. And, um, and we've been living with the ramifications of this myth for uh, uh, a long time, seven decades, eight decades now. So, so you need to know that the disease concept is nonsense. Absolute, total, 100% nonsense. The brain disease theory is nonsense. You know, they use these studies where they take uh, meth users as an example, and this is what the brain disease is hinged on. And uh, they take these meth users and they say, um, here's a brain that's addicted, right? Active user. Here's a brain scan of the person that stopped. And here's the brain scan of somebody that stopped for a long period of time. Now, the premise of the brain disease is that you can't stop yourself from getting high. Now, think about this. The brain scans of the people that did stop in the study were the most addicted brains, quote unquote, addicted brains. So if the premise is that you can't stop and the study subjects did stop, the very study they're, that, that they're trying to prove that you can't stop um, negates that idea. It's these people stopped while their brains were the most addicted in the study. So, so this idea that an addicted brain forces you or compels you to use and that you can't stop um, was proven false by the very study that was trying to prove it to be true. Um, it's remarkable this flaw in these studies that nobody seemed to notice. Um, and the fact that uh, it's very difficult to 
measure a person's thoughts through a brain scan, their drives, their motives, their reasons. Um, and so we really don't know anything about a, a brain disease existing or not existing uh, based on these brain scans because they're just reflecting thought uh, within the individual. So, so the other thing, it's not, it's not a progressive illness because um, as people get older, they get over the problem. Now here's fact number two, this is the other, so, so the disease loss control thing is nonsense. The, um, the second factor is the fact that as you get older, addiction essentially goes away. And people move on with their lives, they get over their addictions um, at a rate of over 90%, whether you're treated or not. I wanna repeat that, over 90% of people, whether it's heroin, the 96% alcohol, 90.1% um, cocaine, 90% methamphetamine, 99%. So essentially everybody gets over the problem, whether they're treated or not. And, uh, and they do so permanently. Now, here's what's interesting. If you were to put that on a trend line from age 25, where it peaks all the way to about 70, where it basically is gone, um, you have a trend line that goes down. That's not progressive illness, that's total remission. If it were a disease, it would be a remission curve. Um, it's not a disease because we know that people aren't compelled to use. Um, and we know that people naturally move past this based on this, this trend line. Any other disease that we know that's progressive or chronic, the trend line goes up. As you have it, it gets worse. That's the point of progressive and chronic, right? Everybody ends up dying from it. Cancer, as you have it, it gets worse. So the trend line, as you get older, there's more of it. Um, or your condition worsens um, through time. So the trend line, if we were to look and compare the trend line of legitimate progressive chronic illnesses, trend line would be like this. The trend line of an addicted person is exactly the opposite. So uh, it's not progressive and it's not an illness. It's not chronic. It's not a brain disease because people that have quote unquote addicted brains stop in the very studies they try to prove that uh, they can't stop. So uh, these are pretty important facts. The entire treatment industry rests on the myth that it's a, a progressive illness, um, a chronic illness, you have no ability to stop. Absolute bunk. And if you look at yourself or your loved one, how many times have they stopped? They're not drug taking zombies once they start. That's not true. They might, it might be an episode where that's true, where they get high and they like it. Um, but it is a preference, it is a choice. It's a confounding choice. It's a difficult choice. I'm not saying that drugs don't do anything. They do. They they mess with the body. They tickle the body physically. Um, they slow motor function or speed up motor function. We know. We, I'm not arguing those physical points or pharmacology. I get it. But it doesn't compel one to use beyond their will. That the facts are the facts. Everybody eventually gets over the problem. Essentially, now people will point out. Well, what about the one percent of cocaine addicts that don't? What are the one one out of one out of a hundred that <clears throat> continues use to their demise. What's what's are they diseased? Uh, no, they like it. In every culture throughout the world, virtually every culture, not every culture, but virtually every culture, you have a population of about five percent of the people that really, really, really enjoy getting high, and it's the most uh, important thing uh, and value to them. It's it's they like it. You know? um, and it's okay to say that. It's okay to have a reason for getting drunk and high uh, that's enjoyable um, to the person, even if it's risky, even if it has dire consequences. Uh, there are many things we do in life that have risk, and uh, and yet we do them. I'm doing one right now. One of the most lethal activities for human beings is driving a car, and yet we don't even think about it. It's highly risky statistically. 
and yet we do it every day, but we don't call it a disease. So, um, so it's, I think these facts are important to know, and I think that uh, we cover all of this in the Freedom Model for Addictions, Escape the Treatment and Recovery C Trap, um, our book. Uh, we have our retreats, the St. Jude Retreat, where we teach that book to people that are um, in chaos and crisis. And we also teach it one-on-one uh, -on -one over Zoom um, through our Freedom Model Private Instruction Program. So if you want to know the facts and you want to move on with your life and you want to know how to easily overcome an addiction, um, then give us a call. It's 888 Four two four two six two six. You'll talk with Carla and uh, Carla Pangburn, and you can give her a call. Again, it's eight 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 four two four two six two six. And uh, let's get your life started. Let's um, get rid of this idea that you're a broken person and uh, move on with your life. All right. I hope you have a good day. Take care.